What do you imagine when you think of the animals of New Zealand? I bet most people would say a kiwi, but today I'd like to argue that the tuatara, a reptile that's lived in New Zealand for 250 million years, should be a strong contender. Tuatara are super unique, they're the only surviving species in their order, and no, they're not a lizard, and they've barely changed from their ancestors over millions of years. But I'm a microbiologist, so when I see an amazing animal like this, my first thought is, but what lives in its guts? <laughs> The bacteria living inside of animals are super important for digestion, immune system, and lots of other functions. So for tuatara, which used to live throughout New Zealand, but is now isolated in predator-free sanctuaries and islands, we want to understand what bacteria they have and how they get them. This can tell us what threats we need to watch out for in the future, and is a look back in time to what bacteria other ancient animals used to live with. The sanctuaries where tuatara live form a temperature gradient with warmer sites in the north and cooler sites in the south. Like all reptiles, tuatara are vulnerable to rising temperatures, and understanding how this impacts their bacteria is really important when we think about conserving them under climate change. Most mainland tuatara come from a single island, Takaporewa, in the Cook Strait, and have been translocated around the country to protect their population numbers. For my PhD, I went out to sample gut community and measured body condition and parasitism of tuatara at five sanctuaries and the source on Takaporewa. I went out to these sanctuaries to catch tuatara, swab their intestinal tract, <laughs> and bring these swabs back to the lab to understand what their gut community is made of and what shapes it. I found that temperature is a driving factor of gut community and that tuatara at different sites do have different bacteria, but not as different as we might think. I found 40 species of bacteria in common from tuatara from all six sites, which is a shocking amount of similarity, considering some of these tuatara haven't seen each other in 12 years. <laughs> I also found that body condition and parasitism were correlated with different communities. This may mean that tuatara are healthier when they have certain bacteria, which is really important when we think about the diet and environment that we make available to tuatara in sanctuaries and in captivity. If tuatara needs certain bacteria to be healthy, we need to ensure that the source of those bacteria is made available to them to help tuatara continue re-establishing across Aotearoa. This work represents a look back in time to an ancient microbial community and gives us some clues for the future of conservation for this unique and treasured species, which makes New Zealand its only home. Thank you. Thank you.